Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah From some of the characteristics of the original Khawarij those sects at the in the early history of Islam that appeared and made takfir of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'anim ajma'in and rebelled against Ali ibn Abi Talib and killed Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu ta'anhuma wa ghayrihim min as salihin and I wanted to highlight very briefly some of the characteristics that the ulama, the sunnah, throughout history have highlighted as characteristics of the Khawarij and how those traits we find in contemporary groups like ISIS or Daesh or Dola al Islamiyah as they call themselves or all the various names that this contemporary group which fits the criterion of being from the Khawarij and from the Sharar al-Khalq the most evil of creation. And from some of the traits that the ulama of the Sunnah mentioned with regards to the Khawarij, the original group, one of the first traits is takfir bil ma'asi. That the original Khawarij, they made takfir of people, they called other Muslims, declared them to be disbelievers for their major sins. And with that, وَإِلْحَقْ أَهْلَهَا الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِالْكُفَّارِ so the original Khawarij, they made takfir of the Muslims for major sins. For example, someone who drinks alcohol, they would say he is a disbeliever. He's not a sinner, he's a disbeliever because he is doing something that disbelievers do and according to them, that takes them out of the fold of Islam. Therefore, they declare Muslims to be disbelievers and then this is in regards to the hukum, to the ahkam, and how they deal with them. Meaning, uh, not permissible to marry them, not permissible to perhaps eat their food. Uh, all of the other ahkam follow their janazah, uh, bury them with the Muslims. All of those rights of the Muslims, they take away because they have declared them to be disbelievers. Likewise, the dar, the place that they inhabit. So what you'll find from contemporary sects like ISIS is they declare everyone who did not live in their places that they controlled within Syria and Iraq to be disbelievers unless they were a part of their group carrying out their evil and wicked and innovative mission. And I'm going to bring evidence from their magazine, from what they say, not from me, not from the Western media, not from the Eastern media, but from what they have uh, declared in their own magazines. And we're going to be with you shortly with that, so be patient. And the Mu'amalat, and we said, and how they deal with people, and in killing. So they declare you to be a disbeliever, predominantly because you didn't make hijrah from them. This is the contemporary Khawarij, and also some of the more extreme early sect, like the Azarika, were also like this. Another trait of the original Khawarij, Khuruj ala a'imat al-Muslimin, that they made, uh, they rebelled against the Muslim authority. And this could either be in their itaqad, in their creed, you know, in their belief, saying, no, he's not Muslim, or through their actual, uh, the act of, of rebellion and revolting. Another trait of the original Khawarij, and you'll find these traits, again, in Al-Qaeda and, and ISIS, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, Khuruj uh, al-Jama'at al-Muslimin. Also that they leave the main body of Muslims. Okay? They leave the main body of Muslims. How is that? We're going to get to that. And this is the original Khawarij. So they would make hijrah away from other Muslims. Even if it's a, a, so, a, a Muslim land, they say, no, the leader's a disbeliever. The land is a land of Dar al-Harb or Dar al-Kufr. So therefore, you can do, you can kill, you can rape, you can pillage and cause terror and the only way that you can safeguard yourself is by doing that or making hijrah to them. This is even has a precedence in the original sect. So they left the main body of Muslims because they make takfir of them in their aqidah, their creed and their methodology for understanding Islam is kharij an millat al-muslimin. Another trait within that trait is that or the way this trait manifests itself is by, of course, they declare the Muslims to be disbelievers. So, of course, that means you are not a part of that jama'ah anymore. They make rulings 
uh, that oppose the Muslims. They make ru they make rulings to uh, make bara or to distance yourself from other believers because they don't regard them as believers anyway. And they also make imtihan of the other Muslims, meaning they test the other Muslims. What are your what's your statement of Abu Bakr al Baghdadi? What do you feel about him? How, how do you feel about the Khalifa to Muslimin? How do you feel about this and that? And they make these tests of people. And if you pass the test, then you are one of them and you're a Muslim. If you don't pass their test, then they make takfir of you. Uh, another trait of the original Khawarij, and we also find in these contemporary groups, صرف النصوص الأمر بمعروف ونهي المنكر that they إلى منازع الأئمة وخروج عليهم وكتاب المخالفين. This is very important. So you'll find that the original Khawarij, they believe that the they would use the text of the Quran. They were mainly focused on the Quran. The original Khawarij did not mainly focus on the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were jahil of the Sunnah and they would interpret the Quran to fit their desires and make rulings on other believers. And so what you find even in the contemporary groups is they also, they want to command the good and the forbidden, the evil. Because when you listen to the statements of these people and when you see the actions of what took place in the places that Daesh uh, controlled, and what you see with Al-Qaeda and these other extremist groups, they believe they are commanding good. They are forcing people. and they But they're forcing people with what they believe is good. With no wisdom and no uh, uh, gentleness or anything else, but rather forcing and killing. Oh, you're listening to music? Off with your head. Literally. this is uh, These are well documented with Al-Shabaab and others and even the Taliban for... Uh, issues like this, weddings, people killing the bride and the groom because there was music or there was mixing. We know that's a munkar. But is that how you deal with the munkar? So there's a difference between Ahl Sunnah and the Muslims, how they deal with uh, uh, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and commanding the good and forbidding the evil. They look at fiqh fi deen and they look at the different levels of uh, commanding the good and the forbidden the evil, whereas those people are generally doing that through violence. And they use those same, the text of the Qur'an and perhaps the Sunnah to use it as a tool and a weapon to rebel against the Muslim leaders. So they say all the Muslim leaders are not Muslim and their lands are not Muslim. You have to go to our land. This is their, their concept. And so they encourage the people to rebel as is well documented. Look at all the statements of especially Daesh. ISIS and Al-Qaeda, how many in their books or in their their tapes and in their their magazines, how many times have they encouraged the people to rebel against the leaders in the Muslim lands, like in Saudi, especially they target Saudi, which is the most adherent to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in general as a government. And an important aspect of that is that they also قتل المسلمين يقتل المسلمين that they a trait of the original Khawarij and a trait of those groups if you look at ISIS for example okay is that they they who are the ones they mainly have targeted mostly most of the people who've died at the hand of these groups are Muslim in Syria in Iraq and in other Muslim lands then in disbelieving lands as well in which they target uh Whoever they target the general the disbelievers they target anyone uh, Everyone is fair game and I'm gonna prove to you from ISIS's tongue their own tongue And so what's important here is that uh, al mukhalifin so they kill and fight those who disagree with them So that shows there's no wisdom There's no anything from the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on how to deal with disagreements uh, disagreements and how to deal with uh, those people who differ with you. Instead, these people, they only know the sword, they only know the Kalashnikov, so to speak. Another trait that you'll find in the original Khawarij and these contemporary groups is that they also have kathrata kira'a a jahla fihim wa arab That the original Khawarij, they had a lot of like Bedouins amongst them and they had a lot of ignorant people who were reciters. So they recited the Qur'an, it was on their tongue as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said in this regard, he said, Hudathal Asnan, Sufahal Ahlam. He said that they were, uh, they were basically young in age and ignorant. They were young and ignorant. 
That that was a, a trait of the original Khwarij. And who are most of the people who join ISIS in those groups? They're ma mostly youth. Although you have some people who are older, but it's mostly people who are immature in their stages in development as human beings. You know, teenagers and families and others. You have people around the range, but the uh, majority of their so-called foot soldiers are those young people. Those are the people who they target. And those are the people who don't, who aren't steeped in knowledge and steeped in wisdom, steeped in fiqh fi deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understand the religion. Another trait of the uh, Khawarij is, as we said, da'af al fiqh fi deen, is that they had weakness in their understanding of uh, the religion, and that's why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about them, and this goes to the second, the last point we mentioned, قَالَ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam يَقْرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ لَا يَجَاوَزْ هَنَاجِرِهِمْ That they uh, read the Qur'an, they read the Qur'an, they recite the Qur'an, but it doesn't go beyond their throats. So you see that their practice, that the original Khwarij were very... Uh, you know, they, they, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, their salat, if you were to see their salat and their fasting compared to yours, you would think you don't even fast. And he was addressing the Sahaba, meaning that the original Khawarij were very uh, adherent to the tenets of worship, but they were jahil in sunnah and in understanding. And that's why yamrukuna min ad uh, they as the 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 Ramiya goes through its prey, or the Sahm goes through its prey. That the original Khawarij, because of their ignorance and because of their ext being so extreme, yes, they read some Quran, yes, they memorized the Quran, but they didn't have fiqh fi deen. So they would pass through the, the religion as the arrow passes through its prey. And from that point, some of the ulama, they made takfir of the Khawarij, saying, oh, they, they passed through the religion, so they used that from some of the, as some of the evidence to make takfir of the Khawarij. Another point of the original Khawarij is that they, that you didn't find uh, from amongst them any Sahaba or al-immat al You didn't find any of the Sahaba and you didn't find any of the, the righteous uh, uh, scholars. And likewise, throughout history, you don't find that. You find that their supporters, either they're ignorant or they have their own set of scholars who are just the most extreme takfiris, and you very rarely do you find any of them uh, in you know that are elders and that are known for steep knowledge. Most of them are young. When you look at a lot of the contemporary people used to refer to Abu Qatada Filistini uh, and what's his uh, even Abu Bakr Baghdadi and uh, in Jordan the uh, Maqdisi, Abu Muhammad Maqdisi, that these people are. <laughs> we're basically in their 40s and stuff, and, and people were referring to them for fatwa around the earth, the Algerians during their civil war, and, the, and, 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 and these people give fatwa to kill the policemen because they're agents of the government and this and that and the other, on and down the line, as the original Khawarij did, meaning that you don't find real scholars amongst them, but you find just people who share their me methodology of bloodshed and evil. And another trait of the uh, original Khawarij is also, and especially these contemporary groups you find, is that they claim and feign knowledge, and they're deceptive in that, and they belittle the ulama sunnah. And how many of those guys in this contemporary times, you'll find all those takfiris, they made uh, takfir, and they declared uh, that the major scholars were, were hypocrites and all these things about great imams of the Sunnah like Bin Baz, Bin Uthaymeen, uh, Imam Muqbil, Bin Hadi Al-Wadi, Allah Yarhamuhum, uh, and many ulama Sunnah that are ma'roof. Another trait of the original Khwarij is their khalal fi minhaj al-istidlal, that they had many shortcomings in how they deduced their rulings. You know, how they understood the text and how they used the text to evidence their practices. And likewise, you find that now with the, the Khawarij, the contemporary Khawarij, like I, ISIS and, or Daesh and all these other groups, is also you see the da'af, the, 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 the khalil fi minhaj al-istidlam. You find the weakness in how they use the text of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, and even the, the methodology of the Salaf. They're very selective. They use the ayats. And, and hadith in order to do, fool the youth, the youth are fooled, and to make 
the most extreme rulings, and we're going to get to those rulings. We have to, because we have to be fair and give uh, the evidence from their own mouths. I just want to establish this this usul, this usul, this foundation of the original Khwarij, and you can ponder on and how they relate to these contemporary groups. Another trait of them, and this is very important, is at-ta'ajil fi, fi ithlaq al-ahkam. This is very important. The uh, original Khwarij, like these contemporary groups, were very quick to make a ruling on someone. Very quick. Oh, you don't make hijra to us? Kafir. You did this? Munafik. You did, look, look at all these other, in the West we had guys like Abu Hamza, we had uh, uh, Misri, we had Abu Qatada, who I don't think really spoke much English, but he lived in the UK for a while. And we had, uh, you know, you have Chowdhury, you have all these other guys, and you had Faisal Jamaiki. Look how Faisal Jamaiki made takfir like he was drinking water and milk. Kafir, 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 kafir. This is clearly a case of the kafirs calling kafirs kafirs. And those are real statements of his. Amazing, amazing that someone would be uh, a claimant of ilm and wisdom and fiqh and sunnah and piety could just make takfir like that about anyone. The people who disagreed with him. Their books are too colorful. The Salafis are like this. Just takfir, takfir, like nothing. Takfir of whole, whole countries because Israel exists. It's amazing, amazing. Where did this istidlal, where did these rulings come from that are, where's the evidence from the book and the sunnah that's clear? And who preceded you in those kind of statements and that understanding that you had? Only the khawarij, only the original khawarij. Also, another trait of them is the hukm al qulub that they made uh, rulings on the hearts of the people. So this is make it easy for them to make a takfir of people. Clearly, so-and-so is this. Clearly, these governments are this. Clearly, such-and-such such is this. And this is in their heart because this. And they make takfir for this. And the last point I want to mention, and this comes from a hadith of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, yaktuluna ahla islam wa yatrukuna ahla ufan. That uh, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, and this comes from uh, also Athar al Salaf, like uh, I believe it was uh, Umar, radiallahu ta'anu, who mentioned when asked about the Khawarij, he said, يَقْتُلُونَ أَهْلَ Islam وَيَتْرُكُونَ أَهْلَ أُثَانِ That they kill the people. You know, they kill the Muslims. But they leave off the, uh, the mushrikeen, the, the polytheists. This is what you find predominantly as a trait. And, and what's evidenced by that is look at how many Muslims have died at the hand of these groups. To give you an indication of how the Salaf viewed the Khawarij from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een and the Salaf al-Saleh, meaning the Tabi'een with Tabi'a Tabi'een, just listen to this one ather, and there's so many if you go to some of the books of the Sunnah, the classical books. Listen to this statement of uh, Sa'id ibn Jamhan. He said, دَخَلْتُ عَلَىٰ أَبِي uh, إِبْنْ أَبِي أَوْفْ وَهُوَ مَحْجُوبُ الْبَصَرِ فَسَلَمْتُ عَلَيْهِ فَرَدَّ عَلَيَّ السَّلَامِ فَقَالَ مَنْ هَذَا فَقُلْتُ أَنَا سَعِيدِ بِنْ جَمْهَانِ فَقَالَ مَا فَعَلَ وَالِدَكَ فَقُلْتُ قَتَلْتُهُ أَزَارَكَ قَالَ قَتَلَ اللَّهُ أَزَارَكَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ كِلَابْ أَهْلَ النَّارِ قَالَ قُلْتُ أَلَزَارَكَ كُلَّهَا وَالْخُوَارِجْ قَالْ أَلْخُوَارِجْ كُلَّهَا In this narration of the Salaf, uh, the, the narration of Sa'id ibn Jamhan, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasi'a, who died 136 Hijri, he said that I entered upon Ibn Abi Awf, and he could not see, you know, he was blind. And I gave him salams, and he gave me salams back. Or he said, I'm Sa'id ibn Jamhan. This is what Sa'id ibn Jamhan said to him. What did your father do? Or, you know, what happened to your father? He said, the, the Azarika killed him. And then he said, May Allah curse the Azarika or, or kill all of them. And then he said, Haddathana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, Ala innahum kilab ahlanar. Verily they are the dogs of the people of the hellfire. He said, and then I said, Al Azarika kullaha al khwarij. The Azarika, all of them, or the khwarij. He said the khwarij kullaha. 
all of the Khwarij. So it gives you an indication of how the Salaf viewed the Khwarij as was the methodology of the Prophet وسلم, as the Prophet وسلم, uh, called them the dogs of the hellfire. So this is how the Salaf of this Ummah viewed them. And they viewed that they were the worst of creation as is also evidenced in a hadith of the Messenger والسلام, Here's a statement of a more contemporary which will be the statement of uh, Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar al-Askarani uh, He said, he was talking about the Khawarij, he said That he said, and this, uh, and that was the Khawarij He said that when they made takfir of those who disagreed with them, look at that, those who disagreed with them, then they made their, their blood lawful. So it's very convenient when you look at the tekfiris and their methodology, it's very convenient for them. And this is the madhab of ISIS. So I don't understand why someone would ask a question and be amazed and say, what is the proof about Faisal? What's the proof about ISIS? It's very clear from their own statements. So we're about to get into those to illustrate the Madhab or Minhaj of ISIS and that it's basically in line with the Khawarij sect in that blood and pillaging is a main tenant of their faith. Listen to some of the statements that they have uh, declared themselves. For example, in their magazine Dabak, uh, in the 10th issue I believe it is, and it looks like page 3, uh, 2015 it was published, it reads in Leon or Lion, a daring Muslim came to the defense of the Khalifa by storming a French factory and beheading a Kafir belonging to France, a crusader coalition nation waging war against the Khalifa. I don't know if that requires uh, much commentary, but it shows for them in their new concept of jihad that individuals can wage it wherever they are around the world. And on top of that, that means that they can make violence and shed blood of anyone who they deem to be an enemy combatant or re regardless of whether they're just a citizen, a guy at work, or whatever the case may be, everyone is an open enemy to these bloodthirsty tyrants. Also, in their magazine, Dabak, and this is uh, from a publication, it was in 2016, and this is also the, uh, it looks like the 10th edition or the 3rd edition, where it reads, In Tunisia, the Mujahid Abu Yahya al-Qairwani made his way into a hotel beach resort with an assault rifle and massacred dozens of citizens belonging to a number of European crusader nations. So here they even read and, and mention that these are citizens. These are just, these are non-combatants. So it shows that their methodology is a methodology of cowardice and a methodology, again, that's based on just spilling blood and pillaging to make a statement in that they support guys going to the beach and just slaughtering civilians and that this is their concept of waging uh, what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu musta'an. In another statement they mention, and this was uh, in, uh, from a knife attack that took place in the U.S. in Minnesota by a Somali named Dahar, Dahir uh, Adan. It says, a soldier of the Khalifa, our brother Dahir uh, Adan, stabbed ten kufar in the state of Minnesota in response to the calls to target the citizens of the nations involved in the Crusader coalition. And this is in their magazine, Arumea. And again, it shows that they have a, a totally new methodology that even the original Khawarij, we don't really know for these types of individual uh, style killings, but rather they fought in campaigns and rebelled and yes, on occasion they did, they might find someone on the road and kill them. So you do see a commonality there with the original Khawarij in their love and thirst for blood. And in another statement you have, which also illustrates the ludicrousy of their methodology. In one of their magazines they mention 
that, and this is a qaida, this is a qaida bid'iyah. This is an innovative principle which goes against the shara, it goes against uh, the understanding, the correct understanding of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the salaf. But this is purely the madhab of the khawarij. Listen to what they, they say about this. So they said, they write, the writer writes in their magazine, he says that a Muslim barred from hijra, so here's their qaida, a Muslim barred from hijra must purify himself of the branches of lesser hypocrisy. So the fact that you are barred from hijra, that means there's an impediment for you to make hijra. You're a hypocrite, or you have traits of hypocrisy. Who understands this except them? Who understands, you know, men sabaka biha the qul? Who preceded you from the salaf as salih from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with these kind of statements of bid'ah, and these ahkam of bid'ah. So it's a statement of bid'ah, a qa'idah, a principle of bid'ah, and then on top of that, they're acting upon that qaida to make uh, declare the people to be hip hypocrites until they make hijra or until they act in act violence. Let's go back to the beginning statement. So he said, so that a Muslim barred from hijra must purify himself of the branches of lesser hypocrisy that hold him back from performing jihad in his location. We, we haven't heard of this kind of jihad. Jihad we know from the books of the Salaf. And from the son of the Messenger of Allah sallam, was behind the Muslim rulers. He said, let him record his will, renew his bayah, carry the Khalifa banner, and strike the Crusaders and their pagan and apostate allies wherever he can he can find them, even if he's alone. So we don't know about this new type of jihad that they are mentioning here. Wallahu Mustaan. Ahl Bidah will never cease to bring about new principles and new qawaid in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is one of the most wicked sins, because it's a lot of times they then try to authenticate that or ver uh, uh, authenticate their principles and say that this is from Allah. So then they tell a lie upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Listen to this statement also. You'll find in Ramiya, and this is in their one of their, mag uh, their issues from 2017. He says, Muslims currently living in Dar al-Kufr must be reminded that the blood of the disbelievers is halal, and killing them is a form of worship to Allah, the Lord, King, and God of mankind. This includes the businessman riding to work in a taxi cab, the young adults, post-pubescent -pub children, engaged in sports activities in the park, and the old man waiting in line to buy a sandwich. Indeed, even the blood of the kafir, street vendor, selling flowers to those passing by is halal to shed and striking terror into the hearts of all disbelievers is a Muslim duty. And this is in Rumiya. And this was published in 2017. Uh, this is issue number two, page 17. SubhanAllah. Do we need to comment on that? And, and Ahlul Dalal will even with that try to justify this evil. May Allah help us. May Allah guide us. May Allah protect us from their evil, the most evil of creation. And there are countless statements from their own tongues and their belittlement of the scholars and their love and thirst for blood and their complete abandonment and distancing themselves from Ahlul Sunnah. Wallahu Musta'an. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And the shortcomings are all from me. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.